So back in VS Code and back in our user service, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the second function here and I'm gonna go down a little bit and paste it and let me scroll up. So here we can just rename this function. So we know this is gonna create a user so we can just call it create user and we know it's gonna take the user as a parameter. So we can say user and we know this is gonna be of type user and it's gonna return an observable. The body of that observable is gonna have a user in it. And then here we can just change this from a get to a post. Okay, so we're sending a post request and you can see I'm already getting an error because I'm not passing in the payload. So here I can just put a comma and then pass in the user as the payload. And this is supposed to go here and I have to remove that extra one. And we don't need this ID either. So now we have our function. So it's gonna call the post on the HTTP and then it's gonna pass in this user as the payload. So let's see how we can use this. So I'm gonna go back to JSON placeholder and let's go here and I want to scroll down and look at the users. So here's the users. So I'm gonna open it in tab and I'm gonna scroll in so you guys can see. So you see we have all those users so we can use any of those users so that we can test this function. So I'm gonna copy the first one and I'm just gonna go back to the project and then go back to the app component. And here I'm gonna define that user. So I'm gonna say uh, this user is gonna be private because I want it to only be used in this class. I'm gonna say this is user and it's of type user. So our type, and then I'm gonna set it equal to this object literal here. So you can see now we have this user. And another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove those double quote and replace them with single quote. So I'm gonna do control F and I'm gonna say search all of the double quote and replace them well with a single quote. And then I'm gonna click this to replace all and get rid of this, okay? So now you can see that we have this user, which is of type user, so our shape, and then we're passing in all of this information. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the name. So let's say this is gonna be Junior. Let's say the username is Junior, which is me. And that should be enough so that we can see that this is a different piece of data. Now notice that we're getting an error. So we need to import that. So quick fix, import. So now we have the user imported. But the other thing is we don't want to send this ID, right? Because we know that this is gonna be provided on the server. So whenever we send this request, the server is gonna create this ID and then save this new resource with that ID, right? So I want to not send this ID. So if I remove this ID, then we get an error because we're not adhering to the actual shape of a user, right? So what I can do is I can put it back and let's go into the interface and I can put a question mark here. And what this means is that this ID is optional. So there is a possibility that whenever we're trying to map some data to this shape, we don't have an ID, okay? And that should resolve our issue. So now if I go back and I don't wanna send the ID, I delete it, you can see there's a complaint anymore. So now we have this data. This is the resource that we wanna create on the server. So we can pass it to our function. The same way, we're gonna do something very similar. So let me copy this function here and I'm gonna go down and then paste it and I'm just gonna change this name so I'm gonna call this on create user and we know it's gonna take the user what I can do is I can either pass the user that I just created on this class or I can just pass it directly inside of this service call so here I'm gonna remove this and I want to call the create user so create user and I know this takes the user so I'm gonna specify the user that I have on the class and I'm gonna change this to done creating user. So we have this call now that we can make and we pass in this new user that we defined up here and then this new user should be created on the server. So now we have to call this function. So let's go up and I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, maybe not call the second one and let's call the new one that we just created. So on create user. So another thing I wanna do is I want to compare to see all the users that we have and then the new one. So on the call to get all the users, so here when we're getting all the users, which we're calling up here, I want to change this log to a table so that we can see the a little bit better. If everything goes well, we should go back and we should see that this new user should be created. So let's go back to the application and let's go back and you can see it's already here, but I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. All right, so you can see we have the first 10 users that we retrieve from the backend, and then we have this new one that comes back to us. And this is the new one that I created, and you can see even though I didn't pass the ID, the ID is still here, which is 11. So you can see we have 10, and then there's the new one, which is 11. And you can see all the information is here. So here's the junior that I put as the username, and here's the name that I put in, which is junior. We could have changed all of this other data as well, but you know this object is quite big. Uh, but you can go ahead and change whatever you need to change on here 
and send the request again. And you should see that the user should be created with the ID 11, which is the next number on that list here. So as you can see, we have 10 here, and this is the 11th user. So this is how you make a post request to create a resource on the server.